Over 300 people dead and counting from floods in Nigeria in 2022 alone. Billions lost in property, decimated farmlands, threats of illnesses like cholera and malaria up next. Plus the very real fear that these floods in 2022 may negatively affect food security in 2023. All this despite flood warnings from my guest. And he says things are going to get worse in the coming weeks. This week, we focus on the Federal Capital Territory Emergency Management Agency's assessment of floods in Abuja. And as we do every week, we give you a wrap up of major stories from Nigeria's presidency. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dateline Abuja. And welcome to Dateline Abuja. I am Kayla Megwa. We begin with an update on the top stories this week from Nigeria's presidency. President Muhammad Buhari started the week by attending the inauguration of General Muhammad Debi as the president of the Chadian transition government. General Muhammad assumed office as acted president of Chad Republic in April 2021 after the death of his father, Idris Debi, who died while fighting rebel forces in his country. President Buhari, who was the current chairman of the Lake Chad Basin countries, called for a pathway to enduring democracy in the country. President Buhari is appealing to member states of the Gulf of Guinea Commission to remit their outstanding annual assessed contributions to the Secretariat. According to a statement signed by the Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Mr. Femi Adishino, the President stated this at a virtual meeting of the heads of state and government of member states of the Commission. Nigeria has continued to deploy significant resources those tackling piracy in the Gulf of Guinea. Through the Deep Blue Project in June 2021, the government of Nigeria unveiled 195 million United States dollars worth of boats, vehicles, and aircraft to spearhead the country's fight against piracy in the Gulf of Guinea. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the operational mechanisms in the Gulf of Guinea region, as you know, are similar to those in some other regional organizations. It is therefore imperative that the Gulf of Guinea Commission adopts a collaborative strategy to engage partners and donors in creating awareness on the objectives of the organization with a view to synergizing for more effective results towards fighting maritime insecurity in the Gulf of Guinea Commission region. Finally, I would like to encourage member states of the Gulf of Guinea Commission to remit to their outstanding annual assessed contributions to the Gulf of Guinea Commission Secretariat. The President also met with the Chairman of the Progressive Governors Forum, Governor Atiku Bagudu of Kebi State and Governor Abubakar of Jigawa State. The meeting was held behind closed doors and the details were not made public. A total of 450 notable individuals have been conferred with national honors by President Muhammad Buhari. The recipients cut across the political class, traditional rulers, judiciary, businessmen, as well as the creative industry. At the investiture ceremony, the president re echoed a vow to hand over a Nigeria free from security to the next generation of leaders. I congratulate all the recipients today who will be joining the League of Awardees. I appreciate the non-Nigerian recipients and assure all of you that this administration will continue to provide the enabling environment for you to undertake your lawful businesses, as I stated earlier in my independent address to the nation, I will hand over a Nigeria that is free from insecurity to the next generation of leaders. Let me appeal to other Nigerians who are yet to receive this recognition to be patient and understand that their efforts in nation building are appreciated. 
President Muhammad Buhari has sworn in Justice Ariwola Ulukayode as the substantive Chief Justice of Nigeria. Justice Ariwola took the judicial oath of office at a brief ceremony in the council chambers before the commencement of the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting. The ceremony was witnessed by the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, ministers, all the justices of the Supreme Court, the governors of Oyo and Ondo states. I believe the law that had taken me this far will continue to support me to do the best for Nigerians. And as I said on the 27th of June, when I was sworn in, in acting capacity, I shall not let down Nigerians. Because with the support of my brother justices, like I can see all of them are here with me, as they were when I was sworn in, in acting capacity, with their support, we shall not fail Nigerians. We shall make progress and, uh, you know, uh, advance the judiciary of Nigeria to benefit not only the common man, all men and women. Meanwhile, the council has approved the takeover of the construction of the Enugu Onicha Expressway by a telecommunication firm at over 202.8 billion naira under the Road Infrastructure Tax Credit Scheme. The Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, explains that the approval followed the Executive Order 7 signed by the President in January 2019. We hope that when the water fully recedes, um, we will see the full extent of damage. But we are already planning our Ember Month movement, which we do in the last quarter of the year. So that will take into consideration any damage that has been done. And uh, we will try and remedy as much of it as resources and time allow so that we prepare for that heavy movement period uh, during the festive period. The government is also hoping to engage Ethiopia on the recent ban of visa on arrival to Nigerians and other African countries. This particular one, I think, is uh, initiated by their own Ministry of uh, Interior and Foreign Affairs. Uh, they, they applied it on countries. It's not unique to Nigeria, but that said, it came to our notice and we spoke to Ministry of Foreign Affairs, our own Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the Immigration Service to deal with it, and the Embassy as well. And I'm sure that uh, Nigeria is one of the markets they cherish well. So um, they must look into the policy. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbajo believes Nigeria can become a world leader in digital economy. He stated this at the 2022 Nigeria Digital Economy Summit. The National Assembly has started work on the 2023 Appropriation Bill, which the President presented last week Friday. The bill scaled second reading in the Senate and House of Representatives. The committees are now expected to interact with ministries, departments and agencies over the next four weeks. And the Court of Appeal has set free the leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, Mr. Namdi Kanu, of the treasonable felony charges preferred against him by the federal government. The three-member panel of justices agreed with counsel to IPOP leader, Mr. Michael Zekome, that Mr. Kanu was illegally abducted and extraordinarily renditioned from Kenya to Nigeria against both international and local laws. There was one fundamental issue on which the court today anchored its judgment, this intermediate court. And that is that the lower court never evaluated the mountain of evidence placed before it regarding the forceful capture, kidnap, torture, and extraordinary rendition of Unam Dikano from Kenya back to Nigeria on the 26th of June. 2021. The Federal Capital Territory Administration has begun the assessment of flood-prone areas in the nation's capital. 2022's rainy season has been described as the highest in the past 10 years, so preventive measures are necessary. The team looks at how well these plans have worked in stopping devastating flood disasters from Galadima roundabout to Life Camp roundabout and other parts of the nation's capital. Please watch this. The rains are here and the Federal Capital Territory is not leaving anything to chance. The authorities have removed structures that are standing on flood plains in parts of the nation's capital. Last year, the FCT Emergency Management Agency recorded at least 82 flood-related disasters. Houses and cars were washed away, 
as a heavy downpour claimed several lives in trade more estates along the airport road Guagualada, Lugbe and other parts of the nation's capital. According to the FCT Emergency Management Agency, at least four lives were lost and over 400 people were displaced. This year, the authorities are not leaving anything to chance as the demolition man went to work removing structures that are on flood path. According to the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, the FCT fall within the high probable flood risk areas. The forecast adds that there will be flash floods on roads and low-lying settlements, disruption of traffic and reduction of visibility. The Nigerian Meteorological Agency corroborated the forecast by predicting heavy rainfall in FCT in October and November. The agency forecasts that the rain will likely cease in the FCT by November. Also expected are strong winds accompanying the rains may likely damage mud houses or weak structures. Following previous experiences, the agency embarked on several joint assessments of flood-prone areas and estates in the territory to mitigate the impact of flood during rainy season. Accompanied by officials from the Department of Development Control, Engineering Services Department and the state developers, all identified infractions were removed. I must give glory to the Honorable Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Mala Mohamed Musa Bello, for giving us the political will to really do our work. Do our work in the sense that um, uh, having mapped out all our strategies, and then assess all the flood plains in the FCT, identified the obstructions and all those things that are causing flooding. And he gave us the go-ahead that we should embark into massive demolition of anything that obstructs free flow of water. Anything. Name it. And that has been the practice. You will agree with me that, as I'm talking to you right now, demolition is going on somewhere. And that has been sustained, and we are doing everything possible to ensure that uh, we open up the waterways anywhere. And that has really helped us. Over the years, the FCT has had her fair share of flood disaster. In 2012, Nigeria witnessed her worst flood disaster. Guagualada was the only town that witnessed the disaster back then before then, flood was not a common phenomenon in the Federal Capital Territory. However, that has changed. In August 2012, tragedy struck when a man and two of his children died while trying to drive out of one of the estates in Lokogoma, a suburb in the Federal Capital Territory. On Saturday, June 2, 2018, six people died when a flood overflowed the culvert and took with it the Siena bus with four passengers and a motorcycle with passengers in Karshi suburb. On August 2nd, 2019, a director at the FCT High Court died in a flood. The FCT Emergency Management Agency had been carrying out an assessment of the flood-prone areas as well as those that were impacted in last year's flood. Aside from enlightening the residents of the area on the danger, the FCT administration is adopting emergency response plans that prevent any disaster. We are putting up a, a strategic uh, flood monitoring and prevention team, which involves all the stakeholders across the boards, even outside the um, establishments of the FCTA, so that we will we bring all the knowledge, the experience, and also the equipments and the technology to ensure that uh, we do away with flooding in the FCT. I receive daily uh, early warnings from both NISA and NIMED. In fact, what I receive from NIMED now is an, uh, uh, an improved version because impact based uh, forecast that we received and we analyze the forecast and we go into the community with full force and advise them on what 
to do and what not to do. So our team are there 24-7. They are going around monitoring and ensuring that nothing, if you drop something that we know that it can block the uh, free flow of water, we'll, lift, we'll pick it up immediately, we'll see it. We don't allow it to, to really go somewhere and then block uh, the waterways or block the, the uh, manhole and so on and so forth. So we, we, are, we are always on our toes. Whereas the nation's capital has not witnessed any fatal flood incident, the concern for the authorities is the flood situation in neighboring states like Kogi and Nasarawa states. However, the FCT administration is urging residents along the flood path to move to higher ground to avoid any disaster. My guest on the program is Engineer Clement Nze, the Director General of the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency. He sends flood warnings every year, and they are largely ignored by state governments. So we have the same cases of flood disasters every year. What's going to happen in the next few weeks? How will these disasters in agricultural hubs like Jigawa, Adamawa, and Bauchi affect food security in 2023? And what's the plan for the over 600,000 people displaced by floods this year? Engineer Clementson, welcome again to Dateline Abuja. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here again. Since the rains started, communities Jigawa, Bauchi, Lagos, these are just some of the states that have been impacted by flooding. In fact, we stay hearing recently that in Kogi State, in Lokoja, in fact, today they told us not to travel Correct. to Kogi State because of the flooding. Do you think the government at these levels are, care? Honestly, much as uh, they couldn't have stopped the flooding incident to take place. I think we should, we should, we should have seen appreciable uh, improvement if actions had been taken by the subnationals, say the state governments. But it, do, it doesn't look like much is taking place to uh, avoid this ugly incident, as much as we cannot stop it completely. What's the reason for the flooding in Kogi? You see, the Kogi State is, that, is the epicenter of flooding in Nigeria, where you take into account the impact of the transboundary rivers Niger and Benue. For instance, River Niger, starting from Guinea, that's the Guinea Conakry, then traversing through Mali, Niger, Benin Republic, and the other inflows from Cote d'Ivoire and Burkina Faso, they all keep coming down to Nigeria. And then also River Benue from uh, Cameroon and the huge inflow from Chad. River Benue, they all meet at uh, Lokoja. The issue, like I mentioned, the, is the confluence of the two major, these two major rivers. What we should have done is adequate preparation. There are small rivers we have internally that we can do clearing. What we talk about is deceiting, removing of sand. That those rivers will become deeper enough to carry more water. Also, build small dams on the tributaries of rivers Niger and Benue. Among other things that da a, a dam structure does is, apart from maybe hydropower generation, irrigation facilities, it also flood control. At a certain, certain period of the year, you can use the dam to control how much of the water that can pass. If, if we have had enough dams on our major tributaries of River Niger, River Benue, it will help to regulate the inflow into the main trunk, the main channel of River Niger and River Benue. In fact, the figures this year, 600,000 people have been yeah, affected. Displaced, yes. Displaced by flooding yes. just this year. What Correct. are your people on the ground doing? People are on the ground giving us a feedback, and it's quite worrisome. It helps us also because we lies with other uh, government agencies, like especially NEMA, at this point in time, because they depend so much on what we predict to prepare for emergencies. But the, the, the DG of NEMA, more or less relocated to the northern part of Nigeria, Jigawa is the worst hit with over 92 people that are dead already. And uh, I can't remember the, the number of people that have been displaced. The sheer scale of this problem, the butterfly effect of flooding, 
schools. Correct. Farming activities. Yes. Disease. Disease out there. There'll be, there'll be an increase in yes. malaria. At times, people, people may start playing host to reptiles. Yes. Crocodile. Uh, Cholera. It's the disease outbreaks, really, that actually get to me. Because, you know, when these things happen, we just think, oh, the flood comes and destroys and goes. No, it leaves its mark. Yes. It leaves its mark in the Ground place. Groundwater is polluted. Maybe boreholes are polluted. Those who depend on borehole for their water supply. Let's talk a bit about, you know, what's, what's happening, you know, in, in many of these areas that are inundated by, by flooding. With the, with the rains and with climate change and with all of these things, it's different. I used to hear about something called August break yes. when I was younger. Uh, there hasn't been a break. <laughs> this Wait, it August. August, there was August break. How long I think was I, the break? I think it happened in the southern part of Nigeria. Okay, but it didn't happen here. It didn't happen here, yes. It it was, and it was around July or so. Oh, and it happened that, around July. Yes, what July. we call a dry spell. Yes, because mm. we didn't have a dry we spell, didn't have a dry spell in, in Abuja, here. at least for the whole of August. If it rained yes. more in, in, in August. Oh, it did. You did. What are some of the areas that people should be in parts of the country that you know should be more cautious? Rainfall is a major input in flooding. If there's no rainfall, there'll be you cannot talk about flooding apart from other things that could happen, other natural issues, maybe melting of the ice bags and so on, and movements of the vessels, ocean, you know, in the ocean, move, vibrating the rivers or the oceans rather. Now, from NIMES prediction, we will still continue to have rainfall up to some time, maybe in middle or towards the end of October. We're talking about the northern part of Nigeria. In the north, yes, It's still up to going October. to be raining, raining. to the end of October? I, I don't think it's up to the end of October, but it's still rain into up to the second week of October, which means we should expect more flooding. But for the southern part of Nigeria, maybe up to towards the end of December. Now, with the, what, what is happening is Nigeria is uh, sitting at the bottom of a basin. If you look at the Washington Basin, that spot where the wastewater goes out from, that where Nigeria is sitting, what we call Niger Basin, that where Nigeria's location is. <clears throat> All other eight, the other eight countries are upstream. Now, the, as the rains, Keep being established in all those countries. Niger, I mentioned it before, Mali, Benin Republic, Cordova, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Chad. They, was, they are coming down to Nigeria. So we are asking which other locations in Nigeria we should, we should look out for in terms of flooding. It is still coming down to Lokoja. And from Lokoja, it is moving down to Edo, from Edo to Anambra, to Delta to rivers and then by yes, and before the water empties into the Atlantic Ocean. And this will continue for quite some time. The current situation is uh, aggravating the already precarious situation in the country, especially food insecurity. That actually brings and me to even, my final question to you, which, is, which has to do with the impact this will have on food production for, the, for this year, for the, next, for, for the beginning of next year, which is when we need a yes. lot of the food that, that we use. What, what do you see as the impact of this, so the impact this carelessness? Will, the impact will be quite much because farmers have lost a lot. So many agricultural lands have been washed away in, in Jigawa, in Borono, in Yobe, in Kano, Kogi, is it an, uh, Adamawa and so on, and the southern part of Nigeria. That was, uh, it's been advocated for farmers to go into uh, insurance of the agricultural products in the event of this natural disaster happens, there can be a cushioning effect. And also state government to assist their national, I mean their citizens. Before we let you go, just what should the state governments be doing right now? When these advices are given here in Nigeria by the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, Nigeria Hydrological Service Agency, we implore the states to please work with these advisories. Where you need to relocate your citizens, please do so. It may last for about two, three months. Save lots of people. And also, the steps to be able to wield or to muster the political will. Well, Engineer Enze, that's all the time we have for today's interview. But thank you very much for speaking thank with you. us. It's and good pleasure. luck again with thank the work you. that you're doing. Thank you to all of us. Good luck to all of us. <laughs>
thanks to my guest and to everyone who spoke to us today on the program. Floods are inevitable, but its effects can be mitigated. All it takes is political will and matching words with actions. It may be easier for leaders to do nothing and seek compensation when the devastation from flooding happens, but that's just wrong, and history will judge such leaders. However, there has to be some way of checking this behavior. As a people, we should seek to make our country better than we met it. So avoid building on floodplains, keep your gutters clean, and if you live in a flood-prone area, it's time to consider moving. That's Dayton and Abuja this week. Please remember to let us know the happenings in your neighborhood using the social media handle showing right now on your screen. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kayla Megwa. See you next time.